let's look at cascading uh, first thing what do you mean by cascading into finance how many into finance are there yeah that's the first misconception people think cascading means there have to be nine into finance no cascading means more than one into finance one master and one slave is also cascaded. One master and eight slaves is also cascaded. It doesn't always have to be nine into finance. Okay, get that clear. So let's look at this diagram. That's your UP. That's the master. On this master, at IR0, IR1, and I have seven, I have put in a slave. On IR2 of the master, there is an ordinary device like a keyboard. IR3, there is an ordinary device like a mouse. Four, five, six are free right now. If I need them, I use them later. IR7 has another slave. On this slave at IR0, there is a CD, on this one there is a floppy, on this one there is a printer. They could be X, Y, Z. I'm just using names for reference. Okay? The point is we need to understand the interrupts. It could be any device, doesn't matter. Now, let's first understand the flow of the diagram. If CD wants to interrupt the MUP, everybody over here wants to interrupt the MUP. So if CD wants to interrupt the MUP, CD will interrupt the slave, slave will interrupt the master, master will interrupt the MUP. Okay. Floppy, slave, master, MUP. Printer, slave, master, MUP. Keyboard will interrupt the master, it will interrupt the MUP. Mouse will interrupt the master, it will interrupt the MUP. And master itself will interrupt the MUP. So, this is how all interrupts will flow to the MUP. No shortcuts. Everyone wants to interrupt the MUP, but everyone has to go through this channel. Did you understand this? Next thing. Next thing which I want you to understand. Uh, remember what did I say? People, you know, they try to understand this architecture. Cascaded into finance. Some people say it's the toughest answer of me. Rubbish. It's such a beautiful answer. But you've got to learn it the right way. If you try to read this answer directly, you will never understand it. You'll mug it up, no doubt, but you'll not understand it. Because to understand this answer, you need to know initialization, which I told you in the beginning of the video. So, something about it. Look, here, what do you know? Initialization is optional or compulsory. Absolutely compulsory. What's the most important thing you tell during initialization? Vector numbers. So that 8 to 5 I know so what vector number has to be given. You don't give 8 vector numbers, I hope you remember. You only give vector number of IRC. The remaining are taken in a sequence. Now whom are you going to initialize? Are you going to initialize the master or the slaves? All. Listen carefully. Every 8 to 5 I has to be individually initialized. Are you clear? Individually initialized. You have to initialize the master, you have to initialize each and every slave. If you forget to initialize even one into finite, that chip will not work, it will not allow anything else to work. It will, the whole system will crash. Okay? Now, when you initialize the master, you tell the master, your vector numbers, let's say, begin from 40 onwards. So, vector number of IR0 is 40, vector number of IR1 is 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, all the way up to 47. I hope you understood this. Now, what happens? Listen, keyboard interrupts the master. Master interrupts the mu p. Mu p asks the master, give me a vector number. What number will the master give? 42. Because 42 is the vector number of IR2. I hope you understood. One more, one more, a little faster. Mouse interrupts master, interrupts mu p. Mu p asks for the vector number. Master will this time give 43. One last example. For my sake, come on, come on, be with me, please. CD interrupts the slave, interrupts the master, interrupts the mu p. Mu p will ask the master, give me the vector number. What vector number should the master give? Hmm. Hmm. You really think master will be 40? Don't be silly. It's a stupid number. 40 is a dummy number. 40 is not the vector number. Why? Because this line is connected to a slate, which means potentially 8 different interrupts can come over here. How can 8 interrupts have the same vector number? For this line alone, you need eight different vector numbers, which will not be with the master, which will be with the slave. That is why you have to initialize the master as well as all the slaves. I hope I made my point clear. 41 is a dummy number. 47 is a dummy number. These are valid numbers because they are coming from direct devices. These are coming from slaves. These are not the valid vector numbers. Their corresponding vector numbers are with the slaves. So you need to initialize every eight to five nine. So this slave has been told your vector numbers begin from 50 onwards. For this slave, let's say 60 onwards. For this slave, let's say 70 onwards. Now what happens? Come on, come on. Printer interrupts slave. Slave interrupts master. Master interrupts mu p. Mu p will ask for the vector number. Who should give? The master or the slave? Yeah, the slave. But does the master also have a vector number? Yes. Should it give? No. So that means the master has to know something. What? On which lines there are slaves. 
That is what we tell to the master during initialization. That's what I said. There are things you need to know first before you. I have not even started with the working. I am still teaching only initialization. No initialization. Working will take one minute to learn. It's the initialization that you have to understand properly. So during initialization, you inform the master IR0, IR1, and IR7 have a slave. So if an interrupt occurs on any of these lines, interrupt the VOP, of course. When you be asked for the vector number, keep quiet. Let the slave give the vector number to the MUP. How through the data bus? All of them are connected to the data bus of the MUP. That's how you have initialized all of them by giving commands. So there is a data bus coming from the MUP going to all these devices and it's by direction. So it happens both ways. So if an interrupt comes from a slave, master will interrupt the MUP. MUP will ask for vector number. Master will keep quiet. Allow the slave to give the vector number. But if an interrupt comes on any of these lines, it will interrupt the MUP. MUP will ask for the vector number and the master will give the vector number. So the master needs to know on which lines there are slaves. I hope you understood this. Now, just like we have told the master on which lines there are slaves, similarly, we have to tell every slave on which line it is connected to the master. This slave is connected on IR0, this is connected on IR1, this is connected on IR7, so henceforth, this is called slave number 0, slave number 1, and slave number 7. This is called the slave identification number. I repeat, the slave identification number. If you don't give the slave this number, it will not recognize itself. It's like you with a seat number in a class. You need that. When you're writing an exam, you need your role number, your seat number. Without that, you lose your identity. So similarly, every slave needs a seat number, a, 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 a slave identification number. So you've told each slave. What is the identification number? Now this was all initialization. I'm going to start working in a minute. Before that, let's summarize these four points of initialization. First, you initialize every 8 to 59. Second, you tell every 8 to 59 what are their vector numbers. Vector number of IR0 and the remaining automatically are formed in a sequence. Third, you tell the master on which lines there are slaves. And fourth, you tell each slave what is its identification number. If you know these four points, working will become very easy. And you'll see that in the next two minutes, you'll be a champ at this. Ten more minutes and you'll be able to explain this to people. It's that easy. But you just need to know this basic first. Now let's start. Let's start. Suppose CD has generated an interrupt. Okay. CD wants to interrupt the MUP. It will interrupt the slave. Slave will interrupt the master on IR0. Master will interrupt the MUP. Hopefully, the slave has interrupted the master in the hope that master will interrupt the MUP. So for this slave, IR0 was the highest priority interrupt. It has given its best interrupt to the master in a hope that very soon the master will interrupt the MUP, which the master would, no doubt. But suppose at the same time, printer generates an interrupt. Printer has interrupted this slave on line number IR0, slave 7 on IR0. Now for this slave, IR0 is the highest priority. So it will accept the interrupt and send it to the master on IR7, hoping that master will send this to the MUP. Both of them have given their best interrupt. Both of them are in full hope to be serviced. Who has to make a choice over here? The master. Master has got two interrupts, IR0 and IR7. Master will select IR0 because it's of highest priority. But None of them know this. Both of them are in full anticipation. Master has decided, yes, I have selected IR0. I know it will get service anyway. Now the story continues. Master will send this interrupt to the MUP on which pin INTR. MUP will finish the current instruction. Then respond by giving the first INTR. Now this is where the whole mess lies. Pay attention the next one minute and that's it. Answer is over. MUP will give the first INTR bar. Now remember 10 minutes back, what did I tell you? Is first INTA bar important? Very much. It's a confirmation. It's an announcement from the MUP. I'm involved. Yes, you will be serviced. I'm interested. Someone is going to be serviced. Now, who will the MUP give this INTA bar to? Will it give it to the master? Will it give it to the slaves? Yes, it will go to the master as well as all the slaves. The first INTA bar will go to everybody in the circuit. So everybody has come to know that some interrupt will get service. Okay, this announcement has gone to all. Each one of them will think, my interrupt will get service because they've all given their best interrupt. Who knows the correct interrupt to be service? Master. So this is when the master will inform the slave using cat's lives. Okay, don't worry. 
Don't worry, we are not here to draw the most beautiful diagram, we are just here to understand this work. There are three cascade lines, CAS 0, 1, 2, which you also saw in the architecture in the bottom left, I hope you remember. So there are three cascade lines. They are called cascade lines. There are three of them because there are eight possible slates. So from here, the master will put the line number from 0 to 7, whichever line number is going to be serviced. Why does the master need to tell this to the slate just for communication? No. Very soon, mu p will give the second idea bar. The second idea bar will also go to all of them. All of them should not give the vector number. Only the selected slave should give the vector number to the mu p. So before the second idea bar comes, but after the first idea bar, because if the first idea bar has not come, the mu p is not interested at all. What's the point of communicating amongst themselves when there's nothing happening from the mu p? So I repeat, slaves interrupt master, master interrupts the mu p. Mu p gives the first idea bar to the master as well as to all the slaves. This is when the master has to inform the slave which slave has been selected. How does the master do that? Using cascade lines. How many cascade lines are there? Three. Why three? Because there are eight possible slaves. So the number of these cascade lines will be any number from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. Basically, the master will put the line number that it has selected. In our example, master has selected line number 0. So master will put the number 0, 0, 0. This number will go to all the slaves. All the slaves will look at this number. They all know their own number. Remember I told you during initialization, we have told every slave its identification number. So this slave knows its number is 7. So it will look for the pattern 1, 1, 1. It will see that the pattern is 0, 0, 0. It will compare the two, realize, no, it's not me. This slave, uh, it wasn't even trying. This slave will know, yes, it's me. I know it is my number is 0, 0, 0. I'm seeing 0, 0, 0. This is what happens between whom and who. The first idea bar and the second idea bar. The moment this happens, mu p will now issue the second idea bar. Second idea bar will also go to all, but by now the correct slave has been identified. It will give the vector number to the mu p. I hope you understood this. I really hope you understood. Let, let's go through it again. It's oh, it's done. Done. Okay, before that, just answer a few questions. What is the use of cast lines? Cast lines are used to identify the slave. How many cast lines are there? Three. Because there are how many possible slaves? Eight. When are they used? Between the first and the second idea bar. Why do we need it? So that the correct slave gives the vector number to the mu. So who uses the cast lines to tell who, what, when and why? Listen. Cast lines are used by the master to inform the slave that it has been selected between the first and the second idea bar so that it can give the vector number to the mu. Did you understand this? What will be the direction of cast lines? They go from the master to the slave. That means they are bidirectional or unidirectional? Obviously unidirectional. They go from master to the slave. Slave is not telling the master select me. Master is telling the slave you are selected. Are you clear? So they are unidirectional. Now students say sir, I remember in the architecture you had shown them bidirectional. Exactly. Because that was an architecture of 8 to 5, 9. Master is also 8 to 5, 9. Slave is also 8 to 5, 9. 8 to 5, 9 can give cast lines. 8 to 5, 9 can take cast lines. So when you draw architecture, you draw the architecture. You're not drawing the architecture of master or a slave. You're drawing the architecture of 8 to 5, 9. So in architecture, you show them by direction. But when you show the system, they go from the master to the slave. So here they are unidirectional, strictly going from master to the slave. So immediately there will be a question in your mind. How does 8259 know whether it is a master or a slave? That's a very good question. That is told to 8259 by a signal called SP bar slash EN bar. I hope you remember. It was there in the architecture at the bottom. I hope in the previous video of 8687 interface, I have told you. Then we use the EN function because that was single 8259. In a cascaded 8259, this pin has dual function. It can work as EN or as SP. In cascade, it works as SP. SP stands for slave program. Some books also write it as slave progress. Doesn't matter. Basically, slave. So SP indicates that it's a slave. It's SP bar. Bar means active loop. That means for the slave, this pin is zero. For the master, this pin is one. Did you understand? I repeat, it's zero for a slave and one for the master. So, for the master, SP bar slash EN bar will be connected to VCC, that's logic one. For all the slaves, it will be grounded. That's how 8259 knows whether it's a master or a slave. 
that finishes the whole cascading okay i'll just repeat the cascading answer pay attention listen to the whole answer and we are done done with this okay cascading means multiple eight to five lines in the diagram there is one master there are three slaves devices interrupt the slave slave interrupts the master master interrupts the mute now initialization we initialize every eight to five line we indicate to every eight to five line what are its vector numbers we inform the master on which lines there are slaves we inform every slave on which line it is connected to the master this is initialization did you understand the initialization now working when any device interrupts a slave the slave interrupts the master master interrupts the mute mute finishes the current instruction response by giving the first time tier bar first time tier bar is a confirmation that an interrupt will get serviced it goes to the master as well as to all the slaves the master has to now inform the corresponding slave that it has been selected that is done with the help of three cascade lines they go from master to all the slaves here the master puts the line number that it has selected which can be any number from 000 to 111 hence three lines are enough this number will go to all the slaves each slave will compare this with their own number till the time match is found this happens between the first and second id bar immediately the mute will issue a second id bar which will go to all eight five lines by now the corresponding slave has been identified it will give the vector number to the mute through the data bus mute will multiply it by 4 go into the ibt obtain the isr address execute the isr that's it that's working of cascade to five lines i hope you found it interesting i enjoy teaching that proper this more 800 times maybe but still each time i teach it a big smile on my face i hope you understood this so have a nice time enjoy yourself